All right, so now we're working on the 4.1 vocab support. Um, so make sure you put your class number. Like in this case, it's period five, um, and today's the seventh. Um, so this is your vocab support page related to uh, congruent figures. So it says choose the concept from the list above. And here you're given segments that are congruent, uh, which is this one. Well, um, it's a congruency statement because um, the, the congruent symbol. So this is number one, congruency statement. If you want to put the numbers up here, also you can, but I'm mainly doing that if you need to know how to spell it. Okay, so um, there's congruency statement. The next one is just an angle measure. It's telling you it's 45 degrees. Um, the third one shows that uh, the trapezoids are congruent, um, so that they congruent polygons, not triangles. So congruent polygons. Remember, a polygon has three or more sides. In this case, it'd be congruent trapezoids. Uh, the next one is about the congruent segments. So that's number four, congruent segments. So the congruent segments just show that they're um, equal and has them marked. Then the next thing, um, this is congruent triangles. Okay, so congruent triangles. Um, which was number five. Any questions about those? Then this one gives you a given and a proof statement. <coughs> <coughs> so this is a proof. So that's that one. Proof. And this one, they're showing you that what the angle expressions are and setting them equal and solving. Uh, so that'd be the algebraic equation. So that's number seven. algebraic equation. It's like algebra with an IC at the end. Okay, um, number eight is um, just showing you the length of a segment, so that's called segment measure. So that's number eight, which makes congruent angles number nine. showing you their vertical angles, so you have congruent angles. Any questions about that? All right, so there's your vocabulary parts and as far as this, they're showing you how they're circling it uh, about corresponding letters. Uh, the A and Q relate to each other for the angles. And then for the sides, they're showing you BC corresponds to RS. So they circle two letters. 
Um, so identify the three remaining um, pairs. So they've already done A and Q, right? So we need B and R. And uh, the next one we need C with S. And then D with T. So that's just our angles. Remember it's like first to first, which was up here. Then we did second to second, third to third, and fourth to fourth. For your sides, they've done the BC and the RS for you. So we need the AB with the QR. So first two to first two. Um, again, they've already done the BC part, so we need the CD and the ST like that. Now the hardest one um, is the first and the fourth. So I kind of mark it like this. Um, these with this, if you can think of it that way. Um, like the A and D going together and the Q and T going together. It says which pair of corresponding sides is hardest to identify. It's AD congruent to QT. And I need my symbol above it. So that's the one that looks weird. Any questions? Okay. Um, now, on three, it says find the corresponding parts by redrawing the figures. And so it's oriented this way. And then they redrew it for you where AD is on bottom and FK is on bottom. Uh, it says it's been redrawn. Why are they easier to um, identify? It shows them shows them in the same orientation, same orientation like AD and FK on bottom. It shows them in the same orientation like AD and FK both on bottom, the short parts BC and GH on top and so forth, but I'm not going to write all that. It just shows them in the same orientation. Does that make sense? All right. Uh, this next one, they want you to redraw a hexagon to make them look alike, and I'm going to skip the directions for that part. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to label A, B, C, D, E. There's going to be three parts to this. Um, A, B, C, D, E. So A is kind of at that angle, and that's the same angle for P. So it's going to be P, Q, R, S, T. P, Q, R, S, T. So the P corresponds to the A and so forth. In fact, that's what we're going to do next. Um, so for number two, um, we're going to say angle A equal angle P um, because those are equal. We're going to say B equals Q. Both of those are obtuse. And C and R, both of those are obtuse. And um, D and S match up. And um, E and T match up. 
Right. So why this is like a longer problem is because it's a five-sided figure, so that means you have to have five sets of angles. If it were just a triangle, you'd only have three sets of angles. But you need all five. Yeah. The main thing is it says all. Now, I like to do the angles first because they're only a single letter. Um, but now we have to do sides. So this is the third part. Uh, so I'm going to use my first two letters, AB, equal to PQ. And then BC are my next two letters. So that's QR. And then CD to RS. DE with ST. And then EA. and TP. So again, five sets of sides. Um, and on Math Excel, it's going to be check boxes where you choose which ones. So it's basically first two to first two, middle, or second two to second two, third two, fourth two, and then first and last, or last and first. Okay, um, number five, this says MNOP, congruent to QRST, identify all pairs of congruent sides and angles. Uh, again, we're not going to redraw it, but we see MN is longer than PO, and RQ <coughs> is longer than ST. So think of it as that's how it relates. Also, like we said, first two to first two. So MN is the first two, and QR are the first two. So um, that's how they're going to relate. So first we're going to do our angles, M and Q, then N and R, O and S, and P and T. So again, first to first, second to second, third to third, fourth to fourth. And then after that, we need the sides. So MN to QR, NO to RS, OP to ST, and um, MP and QT. Remember on segments, your letters could switch, but um, like MN and MM are the same thing, but then you'd have to correspond it to be the right thing. <coughs> Okay, the next part for the reteaching, you all got that? Almost. Okay, the next part for the reteaching um, shows you an example problem, um, which is kind of like what we did on the, the um, PowerPoint, showing you that... Um, a and D go together. The A is missing on this, so I probably ought to put it right there. Um, so then if that's 30, then this is 30. And then if E is 65, then uh, B is 65 because they're both second. So then what they did is they added them up, um, added it up and um, worked it out where it's subtracting from 180. Okay, number six. What angle in triangle ABC has the same measure as angle E? 
Um, so that's going to be angle B. And what is the measure of that angle? I'm going to put equal 65. And then it says add the information to the sketch, which we already did. Put your 65 right there. Uh, then it says, you know the measures of two angles. How do you find the third one? Uh, so this is your um, third angles theorem. And basically, if the 65s are in both and the 30s are in both, then whatever C is is going to be the same as F. So it's going to be third angles theorem. Um, and then we're going to say 65 plus 30 is 95. And 180 minus 95 is 85. Uh, so what is angle C? It's 85. And there's the work. So the third angles theorem um, shows you that C would be equal to F. And actually, the triangle angle sum theorem is what we used. Triangle angle sum theorem means that angles add up to 180 angles add to 180. So that's what we actually did. 65 plus 30 gives you 95 and then 180 minus 95 is 85. Okay, this says before writing a proof, add the information by each given statement to your sketch and then work on 9 through 12. Um, given A and C are right angles, so you put a box there. Um, a, B congruent to C, D. And A, D congruent to C, B. We're also given um, ADB is congruent to CBD. So make sure your drawing um, is updated for those. The horizontal ones are equal, the vertical lines are equal, and the boxes, and then this angle to that angle. Um, so it's asking how you can conclude that this angle is equal to this angle. That's from the third angles theorem. Yes, third angles theorem. And for the third side, that'd be this side, uh, which is in both triangles. So that's the reflexive property of congruence. Um, so like BD is congruent to, um, okay, this is a skinnier angle than that one, so it's got to be um, DB in this case.
All right, um, that's going to be our stopping point for the day. Uh, we have a little more to do on the practice. <clears throat> so uh, we'll do this tomorrow.